Hello everybody, I'm Thomas. Welcome back to another video. This time I'm back with the 10th episode of my series, Let's Roll Up a Dungeon, where today I will be rolling up a dungeon called the Ghostly Galleon of Captain Blackmist using the source themed dungeon generator. And this episode will be the last episode and the first section of Let's Roll Up a Dungeon. After this, I'll do five more, but they'll be a little bit different and I'll talk about that more at the end. So, like in my normal fashion, I will first go over the source I'm using, then the outline I have prepared, and then we'll finally get to rolling up a dungeon. So today's source is going to be a little bit of a different one, and I think it fits what I'm doing pretty well, so that's the reason I wanted to give it a shot and see how well it works. The source is called Themed Dungeon Generator, and uh, it's pretty much just this one page. That's it. There's a couple more pages in the PDF that explain a little bit more how to use it and whatnot, but as far as the actual content, it's just this page. And what's cool about Theme Dungeon Generator is, unlike the other sources I've used in the past, this one you kind of make yourself, which I think is really cool. So it has a bunch of different sections for stuff that you can roll on to roll up your own dungeons. So I have one of these fully written out and prepared, and I will talk about that after I kind of just go over this blank copy to kind of explain what's going on here. Uh, so at the top, you write in your theme or whatever type of dungeon you'll be creating. Uh, the first main section you have here is you roll a d10 to determine what the adventurers encounter, whether it's a corridor, a chamber, or um, something special. And then you have a special table down here that you would roll on. And so you can see here, all the boxes are empty, so you can choose the values you want. So if you only want corridors on a one and two on a D10, you write that in and then you can fill in the rest for chamber and special as you please. Uh, next section here is for corridors where you roll a D blank. And once again, you can fill in the blank with whatever you want. And then you roll for the length and also traps. And then based on whatever dice you enter for the blank well then you can fill in what you want for your corridors you know what numbers you want a straight corridor on whether you want it to turn a t-junction a four-way so you can enter in all the values to make those appear as much as you want and then down here you roll a d something for the length uh, whatever you want to put in and then also at the bottom here you have a separate roll for traps so um if a D something equals a number, then you can roll on the traps table. So for example, you could write in like, if a D six, you roll that. And if you get a one, that means there's a trap there. But obviously these are all blank. So you could put in whatever you want. Next, you have the chamber table where you can roll a D something uh, for chamber contents and then roll for size and exits. So you have blanks to fill in for what you want an empty room to happen on, and then there's a separate another trap roll where you roll a D something, and then on a certain number, you roll on the traps table. You can uh, fill in whatever you want for how often you want encounters to happen. And then finally, you have trapped room with treasure, which is the bottom option. Um, you also then have chamber size. So you roll a D blank plus one uh, twice for the size. You do one for the length, one for the width. Um, then you just roll a d4 for a number of additional exits and it suggests to apply a modifier after six rooms. Rolling a one also indicates a secret door. Then you have this special table where you can put a d whatever you want here and then there's rooms to write all sorts of special dungeon features, which I'll probably be primarily just using this for stairways and stuff like that. Then down here, you have a similar table where you can put a D whatever for a trap table and then fill in a couple of options for different traps that can maybe come up in the dungeon. The top right here, you have another blank table where you could fill in a D something for treasure that you might find in the dungeon. You've got a couple spaces for different options and you can fill them in with whatever options you want. And then finally, you have an encounters table where you roll a D whatever and then you add number of previous encounters to the result, which I think is kind of a cool way to do it, because then you make your higher um, results diff more difficult. So then as you're in the dungeon longer, you have a higher chance of encountering the higher difficulty encounters. So that's pretty much it. I mean, there's some extra stuff down here for resolving encounters, but I'm mainly focused on the mapping of the dungeon. And so I'm not going to be too 
worried about the encounters and the treasure table. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this. So I'll real quickly go over the dungeon outline now. And then after the outline, I'll real quick show you the filled in version of this that I have already prepared. So today's dungeon is called the Ghostly Galleon of Captain Blackmist. And I made this dungeon because I kind of was thinking of certain dungeon themes and stuff that I haven't really touched on yet in the series. And one that came to mind was, OK, pirate ships and ghost pirate ships and sunken ships and stuff like that. So that was kind of the goal and then the intention of this dungeon. So it's going to be a medium sized dungeon. I think I have like eight rooms or so prepared um, as far as the type tags. Well, it's a ship. It's a boat. Uh, you got it's a base because it's kind of a base of operations for Captain Black Mist and, uh, you know, his crew. Uh, it's magical because it is an undead ghost ship that just kind of appears and disappears. So it's, it's pretty magical and undead because there's ghosts and stuff on there. Uh, as far as the detail tags, well, you have coastal because, you know, it's a boat underwater because not necessarily particularly underwater, but it will be, you know, around water on the water. There'll be aquatic creatures. So I figured that that works for a detail tag. Um, magical and undead. I already kind of talked about that. So as for the purpose, the ghostly galleon serves as a haunting reminder of the consequences of unchecked greed and betrayal. It appears under the full moon, offering brave adventurers a chance to uncover hidden treasures and secrets, while also seeking to free the souls of Captain Blackmist and his crew, cursed to eternally sail the seas. As for the history, well, Captain Blackmist was once a feared pirate, renowned for his cunning and ruthlessness. He amassed a great fortune, but was betrayed by his crew, who mutinied and left him to die. With his dying breath, he cursed his ship and his crew, binding their souls to the galleon forever. Now, the ship appears ghostly and ethereal, a spectral vessel sailing the seas under the eerie light of the moon. As for factions, there's two main ones. First, you have the cursed crew, loyal to Captain Blackmist. These spectral pirates attack intruders, but also hold valuable information about the ship and its treasures. And then you have the betrayers. So a faction of mutinous spirits who oppose Blackmist. They seek redemption and might ally with the adventures to overthrow the captain. As for some creatures and enemies that you might encounter, well, first you have Spectral Sailors, which are just ghostly figures, adept in old-style naval combat. Next, you have Ethereal Swashbucklers, who are agile and dangerous. They could pass through solid objects to surprise the adventurers. Next, you have Cursey Creatures, which are ghostly sharks, octopuses, and other marine life that uh, will attack intruders. Then you have Phantom Rats, which are swarms of ghostly rats that can cause panic and spread disease. And finally, you have Captain Blackmist, a formidable ghostly pirate skilled in sword fighting and dark magic. As for some quest hooks, first quest is called the Cursed Treasure Map. The adventurers come across a mysterious partially damaged treasure map leading to the ghostly galleon. However, this map is cursed and strange occurrences start to happen, urging them to follow the map's trail. Next quest is called The Haunting Melody. It says a haunting melody echoes throughout the nearby towns every full moon, casting unrest among the locals. The source, the source is believed to be the ghostly galleon, and the adventurers are asked to investigate and put an end to it. The final quest is called the Sea Witch's Prophecy. A local sea witch, known for her cryptic prophecies, speak of the looming threat that can only be stopped by confronting the secrets of the ghostly galleon. She urges the adventurers to explore the ship at the next full moon. As for the condition and lighting of the ship, it's eerie and otherworldly in its appearance. Uh, the lighting aboard the galleon is dim and surreal. You know, ethereal glows emanate from lanterns that hang in the air, flickering with ghostly flames that cast more shadows than light. Um, next, as for the sounds you'll hear, well, the galleon is filled with haunting sounds. The creaking of the woods sounds like whispered conversations. Uh, next for smells, well, the ship carries the briny scent of the sea mixed with a faint, musty odor of old wood and salt. And then as for the temperature, well, the temperature aboard the galleon is consistently cool, bordering on cold, especially below the deck. And finally, for some rooms I have prepared, first one is the Phantom Cruise Barracks. Rows of hammock with spectral sailors, these ghostly figures replay scenes of their past lives, offering clues or engaging in combat if disturbed. Next, you have the haunted galley, an eerie, cold kitchen where ghostly cooks prepare spectral food. Adventurers might find enchanted items or cursed utensils here. 
Next, you have the ghostly armory filled with ethereal weapons that pass through the living. Here, adventurers could find magical weapons that can harm the spectral inhabitants of the ship. Next, you have the Phantom Brig, which is a jail area housing the souls of those who have tried to steal from the galleon. These trap spirits may provide useful information or beg for release. Next, you have the Enchanted Cargo Hold. Uh, contains cursed artifacts and relics from various plundered ships. Some items are powerful, but come with risks. Then you have the Ghostly Chapel, uh, a small worship area that now serves as a sanctuary against the ship's malevolent spirits, offers a temporary respite and healing. Then you have the Cursed Captain's Quarters, uh, lavishly de decorated but with a sinister feel, portraits on the wall seem to watch the intruders and ghostly figures of the Captain Black Mist occasionally appear, offering riddles and warnings. And finally, you have the Spectral Treasure Hold, the most guarded room filled with ghostly treasure. Taking any item triggers a curse or a trap. So now with that outline out of the way, I'll quickly go over the other outline I have prepared with the filled out version of the theme dungeon generator sheet. So the theme of this is, well, the ghostly galleon of Captain Black Mist. Um, for the corridors, I did one through three for corridors, four through eight is a chamber, and then nine and 10 is a special feature. As for the corridors, I just stuck with a D8 for the roll on a one through three, it's straight, four through six, it turns, on a seven, it's a T junction, and on an eight, it's a four way intersection. The corridor lengths, I just went with a D6. Uh, same with the trap roll. As for the chamber here, well, I did a D10 for the chamber contents. On a one, it's an empty room. Two through nine is an encounter. And on a 10, it's a trapped room. And then for the chamber size, I did a D6 plus one. I should say I, I'm I, the encounter table is empty. What I'm pretty much treating an encounter as as just one of the rooms I have already prepared. So two through nine is going to be just kind of a normal room with one of the ones I have prepared. Uh, then the special table down here, I made a D8 table. So then on one through four, it's stairs going down. Five through seven, it's stairs going up. And then on an eight, I thought it'd be kind of fun to have an extra little thing in there. So uh, I said an eight's a 10 by 10 room with a teleporting portal or some sort of magical doorway or something where it takes you into a room, you go in and then you pop out somewhere else on the ship. Then the final little area I have prepared is traps. So I just made a simple D4 table with just four traps on it. So you have the phantom cannon barrage, you have the ethereal netting, the cursed treasure chest and the sirens song. So that's pretty much it for my outline. So let's roll up a dungeon. All right. So I have some stairs started here for that lead up to the deck. We're starting below the deck with a D10 roll to see what the stairs lead to. Is it a chamber, a corridor or something else? Let's find out. That is a four, which means uh, it's leading right into a chamber. So then we do another D10 roll to see the chamber type. That's a three. So it's just a regular chamber. It's not empty or trapped or anything. So then we do two D6 rolls to get the length. We'll go that's six by two. Okay, well now let's roll to see D4, how many exits there are. Hopefully there's a few. Okay, there's two. Um, there's no table for this, but what I'll probably do is just do what some of the other RPGs do, where I'll do a D4 roll to see if it's north, east, south, or west. Um, so let's see where the first door is, and it looks like it'll be going west, and I'll just roll a D4 again to see if it's kind of towards the bottom. It is. So let's see which wall the other door is on, and that's going to be on the east wall. So then give me a general idea, and it's also on the bottom. So let's see what's going on with the door to the left with another corridor and chamber roll. That is a seven, so it looks like it's just another chamber. So another D10 to roll, see what kind of chamber, just a normal kind. So then let's get some dimensions for it, and it's going to be three by six squares. Okay, let's do a D4 roll to see how many doors there are. And there's three apparently. So let's start rolling those up. The first one will be on the south wall. And let me just maybe roll a D6 to get the location. Okay. So the next door is on the north wall. And I guess I'll just roll a D6 again to get the location. Okay. And then finally one more door. And that is going to be on the east wall and I guess this is a d6 roll so that works let me do that and it's a four 
Okay, well, I'm gonna hop around a bit. Before I start figuring out what's going on with those doors, let's hop back to this one on the right and see what's going on there. So D10 roll for corridors and chambers, and that gives us a three. So it's a corridor, first corridor. Um, okay, so I may roll a D8 for the corridor type, and that is just a straight corridor. And we get the length of it, and that is of just two squares, so 10 feet. Okay, so let's do another corridors and chambers roll to see if this corridor continues. It looks like that's going to be a special table roll. So maybe we'll get some stairs going up or down. And it looks like stairs going up. Um, I might change that a little bit. I might make it stairs going down just so we can have another level because I'm assuming the top level is like the deck, which I don't really plan on doing. I kind of am working below the ship, so I'll make this stairs going down instead. Okay, well, maybe we'll have to go back to that uh, lower level here in a bit, but let's figure out what's going on with these doors over here. So let's start with that south door, seeing what's going on there, and that is a two, so it's going to be a corridor. Do a D8 roll to see which kind of corridor. It's just a straight corridor, and a D6 for the length of just five feet. Okay. Now let's see what's beyond that corridor, I guess. Uh, it looks like it's just another corridor. Okay. So then... D8 for what's going on. It looks like it turns, and then you do a D6 roll to see which way it turns. So it's turning to the left. I think I'm gonna have a turn right, or else it's gonna kind of hit the stairs. Yeah. And then maybe let me roll a D6 real fast to see how far it goes before that. Six, geez, okay. Well, then maybe I can have it go right or left, whichever way it was supposed to go. Let's see what's beyond this corridor, and that is a seven. So that is just a chamber. Let's roll a d10 to see what kind of chamber. Seven's a normal chamber, so then we just need to get the length, which is three, and the width, which is seven. Okay, well, let me quickly roll for number of doors. There's only one, that's fine with me. Um, I'm, let's go with north, okay. And I guess I can roll like a d8 to get roughly an idea of where it is, okay. All right, let's see what's going on beyond this door. Maybe it connects up to that stairway up there. That'd be kind of nice. Let's see what the dice say, though. Um, okay, that's a two, so maybe. Uh, we just got to roll to see what type of corridor it is. And that is a straight corridor. So let's see the length, but I'll probably just still make it connect up regardless. Okay, six. Okay, I like that. That worked out pretty decently. Um, let's go with this door here on the east to see what's going on with that. Let's do a d10 roll. That is a four, so it's a chamber. Another d10 roll to see what kind of chamber. Just a normal chamber. So then it's going to be a two by two room. Okay, let's see number of doors. It's probably going to have like four doors because this is a tiny room. No, it only has one. That works pretty good then. Uh, so let's see what wall the door is on. It looks like it's on the north wall. And then let's see kind of where it is on the left. Okay, let's see what's going on with that top left door there. So that is a six, so that's gonna be another chamber. And yeah, let's just do another chamber roll, which is a D10, so it's a normal chamber. And then let's roll for the size. So that is a seven by three chamber. Okay, so what I think I'm gonna do is for now, not roll any doors for this room. I might connect this up later, but I do still have this downstairs area and I already have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five rooms. I'm only gonna have like eight total. So unless I have some like empty rooms in there, which might happen, you know, if the dice say so. Um, but let me go ahead and draw a little downstairs area. Okay, I just drew it right next to the downstairs area. So then let's see what's going on uh, with that. So that's a five, which is a chamber. So let's do a chamber roll. It's a normal chamber. So then the size is going to be a three by three chamber. All right, let's roll for a number of exits. There's only one. And let's see kind of where it is. And it looks like it's going south. And then we get a general idea of where the exit is. Okay. So let's see what's beyond this door now. And that is a five, which is another chamber. Do a D10 chamber roll still normal chambers. So let's get a size, which is three by three. Okay, let's roll up number of exits. There's only one. Okay, let's see where it is as to the east. That 
Kind of works perfectly, actually. And let's get an idea of where it is. Okay, let me re-roll that. <sighs> let me re-roll that. There we go. So then let's see what's beyond this door. And that is a five, which is another chamber. Cool. Uh, let's do a chamber roll. And it's a normal chamber. So then just getting the size, which is going to be four by two. Okay, that's the eighth room, which we didn't roll any empty rooms. So I think those will all work for the rooms I've prepared for the outline. Uh, the one quick thing I do want to do is I think I will make a small corridor going there. All right, and I think this haunted pirate ship mini dungeon is pretty much done. So let's go ahead and label all the different rooms. Okay, well, for the first room, the Phantom Cruise Barracks, I think that makes sense just to make that this first main room. Um, next for the Haunted Galley, I think that would work pretty good over here, the Haunted Galley. Yeah, because then the Ghostly Armory could go back here. The Phantom Brig could be this kind of separated area. Um, we'll also make this the Ghostly Chapel. So then this area could be the Enchanted Cargo Hold. This could be the Captain's Quarters. And then the back area could be the Spectral Treasure Hold. So now that it's all outlined, let's do a final dungeon walkthrough. All right, the Ghostly Galleon of Captain Black Mist. This haunted ghost ship that you start on the deck, you go down the stairs, and you're immediately in room number one, which is the Phantom Cruise Barracks. Rows of hammock uh, with spectral sailors. Uh, these ghostly figures replay scenes of their past lives, offering clues or engaging in combat if disturbed. Going to the door to the west leads you into room number two, which is the haunted galley, an eerie cold kitchen where ghostly cooks prepare spectral foods. Adventurers might find enchanted items or cursed utensils here. Uh, going through the north of the haunted galley leads you into the ghostly armory, filled with ethereal weapons that pass through the living here, the adventurers might find magical weapons that can harm the spectral inhabitants of the ship. Uh, going to the door south of the uh, armory leads you into the ghostly chapel. So a small worship area that now serves as a sanctuary against the ship's benevolent spirits offers a temporary respite and healing. Going south of the haunted galley following this little corridor leads you into room number four, which is the Phantom Brig, a jail area housing the souls of those who tried to steal from the galleon. These trapped spirits may provide useful information or beg for release. Going north of the Phantom Brig and also going east of the starting barracks area leads you to a corridor that takes you downstairs to the lower level where there's a couple more rooms. Descending the stairs leads you into area number five, the enchanted cargo hold that contains cursed artifacts and relics from various plundered ships. Some items are powerful, but come with risks. Connected to that, to the south, is the cursed captain's quarters, lavishly decorated, but with like a sinister feel. Portraits on the walls seem to watch the intruders and ghostly figure of Captain Black Mist occasionally appears, offering riddles or warnings. And then finally, to the east of that is the final room, the Spectral Treasure Hold, the most guarded room filled with ghostly treasure. Taking any item triggers a curse or a trap. And that is going to be it for this dungeon. So I'll quickly give a preview for what's coming on next week's episode of Let's Roll Up a Dungeon. Like I previously mentioned, this is the last part of the first section of the series where I'm taking different RPG sources one by one and rolling up a dungeon, coming in with an outline and all that jazz. So starting by on the next video, I am not going to just have one source. I'll be taking bits and pieces from multiple sources that I've used and making dungeons for different game systems. Next week dungeon will be a dungeon for, you guessed it, Dungeons and Dragons. That's right. Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition is the system I will be creating my first dungeon for. As for the actual dungeon I'll be preparing, well, I'm not preparing an outline, so I'm just going to be winging it. I might have a general idea of some type of dungeon and like what sources I'll use for that, but I'm really going to go into this pretty blind and just try to figure out things along the way. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, a like would be greatly appreciated. And until next time, I'll see you.